Syphilis is a bacterial infection caused by a thin, tightly coiled spirochete. It is transmitted sexually through vaginal, oral and anal sex, as well as mother to baby via the placenta during pregnancy. Syphilis has three stages of infection. Stage one is infectious, primary, secondary and early latent. Stage two is non-infectious or late latent. Stage three is tertiary syphilis. Syphilis has been known to be the great imitator. This is because many of the signs and symptoms of syphilis can be associated with other infections. It is important to know the symptoms and have a low threshold of diagnosis of syphilis, particularly in outbreak areas, such that we can identify potential cases. In fact, having a low threshold of suspecting any STIs is very important. And this is because many STIs can present without any symptoms. Primary syphilis. Patients may present with an ulcer, otherwise known as a shanker, on the vulva, the penis, the anus, as well as in the cervix. The ulcer could also be internal, and it's usually painless and solitary. Any solitary ulcer in the genitals should be considered as syphilis, unless proven otherwise. The ulcer tends to be non-tender, tends to have well-defined margin, with an indurated base. Patients, doctors may not notice it, especially if it's in the anus or in the cervix. Although more often solitary, in 30% of cases, the ulcers are multiple. The inguinal lymph nodes tend to be enlarged, tend to be rubbery and non-tender. The incubation period ranges from 10 to 90 days, an average of three weeks. The shanker usually heals within a few weeks, even without treatment. Secondary syphilis. The patient may present with constitutional symptoms, including fever, headache, malaise. The skin is involved in 90% of cases. The rash tends to be generalized involving the trunk, but may only involve the palms and the soles. The rash of secondary syphilis may mimic any rash, for example, gut psoriasis, pityriasis rosea, and drug eruptions. Look out for alopecia, which is patchy hair loss, condylomata lata, which are warty-like, flat-topped, white growths. And it is also important to look out for mucosal lesions in the mouth, snail track ulcers. The patient may also develop a mild hepatitis. During secondary syphilis, there may also be neurological signs Remember cranial nerve palsies, in particular cranial nerve 2 and cranial nerve 8. They can also be meningitis. The incubation period is 2 to 24 weeks with an average of 6 weeks. If untreated, the symptoms will actually resolve over the next few weeks, but may recur later. Early latent syphilis implies infection less than 2 years and it's considered as infectious syphilis. This means a positive syphilis serology with no symptoms or signs after a known documented negative syphilis serology less than two years ago. Some people will never develop symptoms and will only be diagnosed by serological tests. If untreated, people will become asymptomatic over the next 12 to 24 months from the initial infection. Late latent infection implies that the infection occurred more than two years ago. That is, the documented syphilis serology was negative from more than two years ago. After two years, that is late latent syphilis, people are no longer considered infectious to their sexual partners. 10 to 30 years after the infection, if it's untreated, 30% of the cases can reactivate after the late latent stage and cause tertiary syphilis. Tertiary syphilis may present as neurological syphilis. Commonly, it causes dorsal column damage, ocular and other cranial nerve damage, as well as meningovascular disease. 
Any urological or psychiatric symptoms may be due to syphilis. Cardiovascular syphilis often affects the large vessels, especially the aorta at the aortic arch and the aortic valve. Another symptom of tertiary syphilis is gummers. Gummers is an erosive inflammatory lesion that commonly affects the skin or the bones, but can affect any tissue. Untreated syphilis can lead to many complications during pregnancy, uh, including preterm labour, uh, preterm birth, stillbirth, or even neonatal death. It can also lead to congenital syphilis, which is a multi system syndrome consisting of things such as bony deformities, cognitive impairment, and deafness. A mid trimester spontaneous miscarriage is the most common outcome of syphilis in pregnancy, which is obviously tragic for everybody. In nearly all pregnant women with untreated primary or secondary syphilis, the baby will experience some form of adverse outcome. Prevention of this is strongly linked to early and regular antenatal care, which includes syphilis testing. The risk of adverse effects on the baby is greatly reduced if the syphilis is detected and treated early in pregnancy. Due to this, pregnant women in a syphilis outbreak area need to be tested early in pregnancy and retested several times throughout the pregnancy to detect any reinfection. It is also important in syphilis outbreak areas that partners of women who are tested positive in pregnancy for syphilis also get tested and treated for syphilis. Many jurisdictions that are part of the syphilis outbreak area have updated their antenatal guidelines to include increased testing for syphilis during pregnancy. Make sure you know your local guidelines. The majority of outbreak areas recommend increased testing in pregnancy at booking 28 weeks, 36 weeks, birth and six weeks after delivery. Diagnosis of congenital syphilis is complex. If you think there's a risk of congenital syphilis, make sure you get an assessment from a specialist. The baby should be examined for signs of congenital syphilis and perhaps uh, will need further investigations including x-rays, CSF examination, PCR from the placenta and other blood tests. Be alert for reinfection and guard against this by performing adequate contact tracing and treating and testing of all sexual contacts.